assalamu alaikum welcome back to my channel uh, our today topic is right ventricle systolic pressure in this video i will show you how to estimate uh, right ventricle systolic pressure so first of all uh, you uh, you need to know what is right ventricle systolic pressure right ventricle systolic pressure is a measurement commonly found on an echocardiogram that provides us a value estimating the pressures within the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery pressure are best obtained via cardiac catheterizations. Echo allows us to obtain a non-invasive value uh, via our right ventricle systolic pressure measurement which tell us the pressure generated by the right side of the heart. RVSP sorrows as a guide to help determine the pres presence of uh, pulmonary hypertension, hypertension within a patient. Right ventricle pumps blood to pulmonary artery in order for the lungs to receive the blood. Tricuspid regurgitation represents pressure between the right ventricle and right atrium. Tricuspid regurgitation causes pressure on the right side to uh, elevate. Higher the TR gradients, the more work on the right ventricle to pump blood to the pulmonary artery. Right ventricle systolic pressure can estimate the pulmonary artery systolic pressure in the absence of RVOT obstruction or pulmonary stenosis. How do we obtain uh, RVSP? There are two components that contribute to determining the right ventricle systolic pressure or RVSP. Number one is tricuspid regurgitation maximum jet velocity. Number two is right atrial pressure. And, uh, we add the tricuspid uh, maximum gradient uh, plus right atrial pressure. And so uh, we will be obtained the uh, right ventricle systolic pressure from this. As I told you that for RVSP we need two components which is tricuspid regurgitation velocity or gradients. Second is right atrial pressure. Now you see there is uh, severe tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, so how we get uh, velocity from this uh, tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, within our routine screening protocol, we put Doppler on the tricuspid well in order to obtain the peak regurgitation velocity. The measurements are angle dependence. It is crucial we put the Doppler per maximum TR gradients in multiple windows. We take the peak velocity obtained and report the value in meter per second. So how we uh, get uh, velocity from this tricuspid regurgitation let put uh, continuous wave doppler uh, to the parallel to the flow and here we will get the maximum peak velocity peak velocity from uh, this jet here you see the velocity is 460 centimeter per second but we need in millimeter um, in meter per second so this is 4.6 meter per second the uh, velocity of the tricuspid uh, regurgitation uh, and the formula is uh, as you know the Bernoulli equation the power velocity square so the 4.6 has a square so the we put in the formula for velocity square so for this will be the peak gradient came at 84 or 85 millimeter of mercury as you see the machine gave us by itself normally the machine every machine has the setting to whenever you get uh, you put the caliper on the peak of the jet and, uh, the machine will give you uh, the peak gradients so no need of any formula or any uh, calculation for this the machine will give you uh, by itself now we have the tricuspid regurgitation velocity and gradients 
uh, now we add the right atrial pressure uh, which is the second component for right ventricular systolic pressure to um, to this to this dr and we will get the right ventricular systolic pressure so how to calculate right atrial pressure let's watch the video to understand how to get rvsp and how to calculate right atrial pressure as you know we need the right atrial pressure uh, as we calculate the tricuspid regression velocity or gradients uh, also we have need to uh, calculate the right atrial pressure for right atrial pressure we will look for the ivc inferior vena cava and we will uh, look two things in the ivc first the diameter uh, is it or uh, enlarged or the normal in size uh, and uh, uh, is it collapsible or poor collapsibility or not collapsible so uh, we will know uh, we whenever we see the normal diameter and normal collapsibility of the ivc we, we we will know uh, how much the pressures in the uh, of the right atrium and if there is any abnormality in the collapsibility and the and the diameter or dilatation here in the ivc so uh, how much the right atrial pressure will be elevated so uh, i will uh, show you the slide and you will see uh, the old uh, ranges of the right atrial pressure and now the new guidelines uh, of the american society of eco uh, you will see how much uh, the right atrial pressures we have now you see in the table the all guidelines of the american society of eco for right atrial pressure and the new ones and the new ones as we see the 3 millimeter of mercury 8, 8 millimeter of mercury and 15 millimeter of mercury but when uh, we say that there is a 3 millimeter of mercury of, of the right atrial pressure or there is 15 millimeter of mercury there uh, as i told you that we will uh, look for the right atrial uh, for the ivc uh, collapsibility and uh, the diameter whenever the ivc size is dilated we will add uh, three millimeter of mercury because the right atrial pressure will be uh, elevated from the mild whenever the ivc collapsibility is poor or less than 50 percent we will again add uh, eight millimeter of mercury of the uh, right atrial pressure if both of the uh, them uh, like uh, dilatations uh, and uh, poor collapsibility both at the same time so we will add uh, we will say that the right atrial pressure is 15 millimeter of mercury if both of these are normal so uh, the right atrial pressure will be normal and this is about to 3 millimeter of mercury i hope you will be understand we will uh, see the ivc if there is normal uh, diameter and normal collapsibility so the right atrial pressure will be normal as three millimeter of mercury if there is a dilatation or the poor collapsibility one of them uh, uh, one of them and these uh, two abnormality uh, uh, we see in the ivc uh, uh, there, there is a dilatation or there is a poor collapsibility so we will add eight millimeter of mercury if both of them are present so we will be at 15 millimeter of mercury if uh, one uh, abnormality if there is a dilatation of the ivc we will simply add uh, 8 millimeter of mercury if there is a uh, less than uh, uh, 50 percent collapsibility we will add uh, 8 millimeter of mercury if both of them are present we will be at uh, 15 millimeter of mercury of the RA R pressure if both of them are normal so the pressure will also be normal as 3 millimeter of mercury look at these two uh, ivc's the uh, upper one and the lower one 
both of the both of these are normal the lower one is uh, also visually we see the size will be also normal and the collapsibility also is good so uh, this is the normal and the right atrial pressure will be three millimeter of mercury which is normal the upper one you see i have my ear 22.0 centimeter 20 millimeter up this diameter and the collapsibility you also see when there is a collapsing the uh, the measurement is 0.9 centimeter so uh, the collapsibility is greater than 50 percent so these are normal ivcs and the right atrial pressure uh, will be three millimeter up mercury so we add uh, the tr gradient this um, pressure the three millimeter of mercury and we will get the right ventricle systolic pressure as we see in the earlier video which is 84 85 millimeter of mercury of the tr gradients so whenever we add the three uh, three millimeter of mercury of the right atrial pressure the uh, total pressure uh, of this we will almost 90 millimeter of mercury so there will be a elevated right ventricle systolic pressure now look at this one both of the ivcs are abnormal the lower one is uh, hugely dilated and uh, and non non collapsing you see by visual no uh, measurement needed here and the upper one also is uh, not collapsible and uh, almost normal in the diameter so the pressure will be uh, at or at to the lower one is 15 and the upper one uh, is 8 because this is uh, not dilated the upper one and uh, as, uh, only is uh, uh, poor collapsibility so the upper one ivc uh, uh, the ra pressure is 8 millimeter of mercury and the lower one is 15 millimeter of mercury so let's get the right ventricle systolic pressure for, for this patient this is the tr which is severe tricuspid regurgitation and here the velocity is 4.6 and the gradient is 84 millimeter of mercury now we will see the ivc of this patient and this ivc is uh, which is i see that this is the uh, no collapsibility here so the pressure will be 8 millimeter of mercury and the size uh, i have is 23 so this is dilated also so the pressure gradient the right atrial pressure uh, is 15 millimeter of mercury because the ivc is dilated and non-collapsing so whenever both of the abnormality uh, present at the same time so the right atrial pressure is 15 millimeter of mercury and the uh, and that pressure we add to the tr gradients uh, and uh, we have the right ventricle systolic pressure is uh, about uh, 100 millimeter of mercury so this is the right ventricle systolic pressure uh, method we will get the tr gradients and then we add uh, we add the uh, right atrial pressure to this and uh, as i told you the right atrial pressure uh, we will see ivc part this and uh, whenever uh, ivc dilated and non collapsing the right atrial pressure is about 15 millimeter of mercury okay this patient this tear is also severe but that doesn't mean uh, that uh, the tr is severe the gradient will also be very high no this is uh, not necessary whenever uh, sometime the tr will be mild and the gradient will be very high and when uh, sometime the tr will be severe and the gradient will be low because sometimes the rv uh, is dysfunction so the uh, pressure will be not so high there is 34 millimeter of mercury of the tr gradient and the ivc is dilated and non-collapsing the ivc size is 23 mm and above from the 21 mm 
uh, 2.1 centimeter is dilated so this ivc is dilated also and non-collapsing so here the ra pressure is also 15 millimeter of mercury so 34 millimeter of mercury is the tr gradient and we will add the uh, ra pressure which is 15 so this is uh, 40 and 50 almost 50 50 uh, millimeter of mercury of the right ventricular systolic pressure in this case let's take um, rvsp of this patient here is almost moderate tricuspid regurgitation and the velocity or pressure gradient is 21 24 millimeter of mercury or something like that and uh, now the ivc uh, how much the ivc is okay the ivc is uh, 20 millimeter up uh, 20 millimeter or 2.0 centimeter and also a good uh, collapsibility so we will add 3 millimeter up mercury to, to that tricuspid gradient and the uh, total uh, gradients of this patient or the rvsp of this patient is 30 millimeter up mercury or less than so this is the normal patient are normal right wind systolic pressure not elevated now the reference range of the rvsp how much the, is the normal rvsp right wind systolic pressure and how much they elevated once we determine the right atrial pressure we are able to then add the tr gradient p gradients to the ra pressure and to determine the rvsp less than 35 millimeter of mercury assuming a normal ra pressure of 3 millimeter of mercury there is a lot of variability in the lab setting their own cutoffs range due to inconsistency of accurate right atrial pressure estimation if a lab uses uh, an ra uh, right atrial pressure of 10 instead of 3 for normal right atrial pressure this will be create a higher cut up range for normal values normal cut up range of 35 millimeter is uh, of mercury is based on the tr peak velocity of 2.8 meter per second plus the right atrial pressure uh, 3 millimeter of mercury tr peak velocity of 2.8 within the inflated value of incorrectly used as the right atrial pressure will calculate a, a right ventricular systolic pressure 40 this is why many labs use 40 as their cutoff uh, range now i told you that the new ranges of the american society of echocardiography the normal uh, right ventricular systolic pressure is less than 35 millimeter of mercury as you add 3 millimeter of mercury uh, of the normal right atrial pressure if you add 10 millimeter or you add normal uh, right atrial pressure 10 millimeter of mercury then you will uh, then your uh, cut up range will be high from 35 and if you use these new guidelines then the 35 less than 35 is a normal range of our rvsp or above from 35 millimeter of mercury is elevated or pulmonary atrial hypertension you will be labeled as so thank you for watching the video uh, if i hope you will be learn from it and uh, kindly like share and comment please